ever-present problem in flying is spatial disorientation, or pilot vertigo, the sensory conflict created in flight by the equilibrium senses. Involved are the eyes, the inner ears, and the body sense, which provide sensations of equilibrium. First and most important is the visual sense. With a true frame of visual reference, such as a clear horizon, there are no equilibrium problems. Necessary corrections in attitude are made immediately. Flying over cloud layers, the true horizon completely disappears. Now the cloud layer becomes the visual frame of reference. In the absence of a true horizon, the flight instruments are the only dependable frame of reference. One of the other equilibrium senses is the inner ear. In this non-auditory portion are the semicircular canals, the horizontal, the posterior vertical, and anterior vertical. Each operates in its particular plane and is filled with fluid. At the end of each canal is the ampulla, which contains the sensory hairs. These hairs form a liquid-type partition and function with a damp, pendulum-like action. During rotation, the inner ear moves with the head. The fluid, which has inertia, tends to remain in position during the acceleration phase of rotation, thus deflecting the hairs in the opposite direction. This produces the sensation of movement. After acceleration has ceased, the hairs return to the normal position. Because of the damping effect, this takes at least 20 seconds. However, a minimum rate of acceleration is necessary to disturb the canal fluid. When the acceleration is not great enough, there is no sensation of movement, although movement is taking place. Whenever the acceleration is sufficient to disturb the fluid, the sensory hairs are deflected, producing a sensation of rotation. With this simplified aircraft in straight and level flight, the hairs are in normal position. When a turn is made, the hairs are deflected to produce the sensation of what is actually happening. After 20 seconds in a constant rate turn, the hairs return to normal, even though the turn continues. When recovery is made, the hairs are deflected, producing the sensation of turning in the opposite direction. This sensation is false, for the aircraft is now actually straight and level. This simplified design shows another part of the inner ear, the utricle, a cavity which contains sensory hairs and chalk-like particles called otoliths. The otoliths acting on the sensory hairs produce sensation, indicating the position of the body in relation to gravity. On the ground, where gravity remains at 1g, they are always dependable. Here, in exaggerated fashion, the otoliths are shown during changes in aircraft attitude and motion. During flight maneuvers, the otoliths can give false information. For example, skidding in a flat turn produces the sensation of banking in the opposite direction. In a loop, pulling more than one G at the top, the effect on the otoliths is the same as that of the Earth's gravity. The hairs remain straight with the same pressure direction relationship and the sensation of being upright is produced when the aircraft is actually upside down.
The third factor in aerial equilibrium is body sense. This includes the internal organs, the joints, the skeletal muscles, and the tendons. Sensory nerve endings in all these provide body position information. Also included are touch and pressure, such as that felt in the seat of the pants. For example, an updraft lifts the aircraft. The sensation produced is that of being pushed down into the seat, a sensation ordinarily associated with climbing. The seat of the pants pressure, plus the push on the other organs, creates a false sensation of a climb. A correction is made for a climb. As a result, the aircraft goes into a dive. In weather, sometimes it's necessary to go on instruments and break off formation. Here the wing pilot did not realize the flight was already in a descending right turn. Therefore, when the break off was made, the aircraft entered a steep spiral. The instruments indicated this, but the attitude was unexpected and resulted in confusion. It took about 35 seconds to transition to instruments and begin recovery. In this situation, at the beginning of the spiral, the sensory hairs gave the correct sensation. However, it took more than 20 seconds to overcome confusion and to transition to instruments. Therefore, the sensory hairs returned to normal while the right turn continued. The correction to the left during recovery produces the false sensation of a left spiral while the aircraft is straight and level. Correcting for the imaginary left spiral, a spiral is re-entered to the right. This cycle of confusion and recovery is repeated. Now there's not enough altitude for recovery.
it's necessary to make a correct appraisal of the instrument before taking any definite action. type of aircraft in all kinds of operations, conditions conducive to spatial disorientation can occur. This B-47 pilot is experienced, over 4,000 hours in the air. But vertigo makes no exception. I was flying in rough weather. I cross-checked my instruments, and they indicated that I was in a steep turn. But I felt I was in a slight climb. However, I remembered the phrase, keep on those instruments, keep on those instruments. I made myself believe the instruments and was able to recover. Pilots should be exposed to sensory illusions during training. Here's another example. A different aircraft in another type of operation. My last experience with vertigo was in night weather. I thought I was in a dive and corrected for it. Well, this got me into a low airspeed 90 degrees back. My co-pilot said, I've got it, and actually took over the controls. I got on instruments and stayed on them until I was able to resume control of the ship. Yes, vertigo can happen to anyone when the conditions are right. Everyone's equilibrium senses function in the same manner. A Korean war ace with over 5,000 hours was an instructor at Williams Air Force Base. Flew 86s in Korea, credited with nine MiGs. Now a well-known test pilot. No amount of training will alter the normal operation of the equilibrium senses. And regardless of experience, these senses will produce the same sensory illusions in everyone. At the beginning of the rotation, the pilot points his thumbs to the left indicating that he realizes he is spinning in that direction. At the end of 30 seconds, the pilot points thumbs straight up, indicating that he feels he is no longer rotating. With the change in rotation speed, the pilot indicating that he now has the sensation he is spinning in the opposite direction. The function of the equilibrium sensors must not only be known, but understood. Then, conflicts between the imaginary and the real in flight can be resolved. Awareness must be developed, an awareness of the unreliability of bodily sensations in flying situations. Head movement during maneuvers may result in the Coriolis effect and produce severe spatial disorientation. Unnecessary head movements must be avoided. Since everyone is subject to the difficulties of spatial disorientation, the same rules apply to all. Believe the instruments. Use them properly. Cross-check. Appraise the situation before taking action. After transitioning to instruments, Maintain instrument flight. Trust and follow the flight leader. And without exaggerated head movements, continually monitor the cockpit. In addition to knowledge, realistic training is required. Continual practice is necessary to maintain proficiency. The answer then to spatial disorientation is 
knowledge, understanding, training. 